So I'm here with Lee Scott from Starag. Um, today we're going to be talking about an application from within the aerospace sector. Lee, we've been doing quite a few episodes on the kind of materials that are machined within the aerospace sector and also some of the, the product on aircraft. Um, this is about aerofoils. Now, a critical part, as with most of the parts we've talked about within the aerospace sector. Firstly, maybe describe what they are and, and where they go for those that don't know. Well, what we're talking about here specifically are turbine blades. So it's a single product, single aerofoil product, um, usually made from materials like nickel alloys or titaniums, can be stainless steel for land-based products. And, and the turbine blade is typically machined, root and tip, aerofoil all over, and then that's slotted into a disc and assembled into the engine. So what's the hard aspects about manufacturing these? Because they're not a, a regular kind of day-to-day, -day, anybody can pick up and make one, are they? There's there, a lot there, involved. There is a lot involved because they're a complex shape. So the, the, the key is being able to produce a very accurate complex shape in a, a sensible time where you can make money at it. And that shape is there for a reason? Sure, the, 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 the shape's there to control airflow through the engine and, and, and give drive, if you like, to, to push the air backwards through the engine. So, so um, yeah, the, the, the more modern aircraft use um, very, very thin profiles, which, uh, which mean the, 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 the blade rings as, you, as, you, as, you, as you're cutting it, you get a lot of vibration, or you can get a lot of vibration. Um, and, and these are the kind of challenges that we're faced with. So we, we tend to make blades that come off the machine finished. We don't like to polish them after they're finished. Okay, and when I look inside the machine, I've seen them being made many times. The whole thing fascinates me, the speed um, and the precision that you need to achieve. And you've got so much going on in here, you know, uh, with, the, with the tooling, with the, with the heat and, uh, you know, the surface finishes, you know, all of these things. I mean, how do you begin to make a machine that can produce these to such precision? Start from the ground, ground up. So we've got a range of machines for different size blades and they're manufactured specifically for making blades. You could make a blade on a standard five axis machine, but they're not kinematically designed to cut that product. Ours are. So short axis moves, very stiff. We, we absorb all the, all the chatter and the vibration that, that, that we spoke about earlier. We can hold the blade and we can uh, put tension and compression and lots and lots and lots of different features. We have our own blade software, so we optimize the tool path. So, that, so the whole product is a blade focused. And then what about, you're not just making one of these either, you know, every engine's got a lot more than that. So how do you keep, I'm assuming you keep these machines running unmanned. And if you do, they've got to achieve the same results on every single part. It's not just, you know, you can't just leave this and worry whether it's going to go out of tolerance or what have you. How do you do that? Well, all, all the machines have an option to, to load the components uh, anyway, so almost like a twin pallet system on, on, on the machines for, for workpiece loading. Then you can load the workpiece changer either by robot or by other uh, mean, means of automation. So you're absolutely right, the machines have to, have to keep running. So, um, so w whether it be a standalone machine or, or a machine in a cell, uh, we, we can combine the machine in a cell with other operations like part marking and washing and measuring and, and, and all sorts of different things. So. And with the aerospace industry on the up and more aircraft being built every year, I suppose we need more blades. For sure, for sure. And, and, and technology's changed, so we can have, as you can see, a completely unmanned process. Mm -hmm.